The Super Mario Brothers movie is full of Easter eggs, and we knew this when we were actually watching the film. But now that the film is out on digital, we can actually go through each scene frame by frame and piece apart even more incredible Easter eggs that were hidden from us this entire time. And trust me, there's a lot. But today, I have about 21 brand new details for you guys to check out within the Mario Brothers movie that you almost certainly missed at least some of these for sure because even I was surprised to find some of these out. Now, we already made an analysis video over the entire movie, so if you want to check that out, check the card above or the link in the description. And we kind of just went over all the stuff that was kind of obvious and lots of the stuff that most people pointed out so this one is a lot more detailed and we go deep with 20 interesting facts that you probably did not see because it was so well hidden well if you guys enjoyed today's video stop what you're doing right now and let me know by leaving a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things to super mario brothers movie and nintendo in general and without further ado let's jump into the video well first i want to give a big thanks to cory gangster monkey on twitter who was able to put a list together of a lot of these facts so big thanks to them and check out their account on Twitter um, but first starting off with baby Luigi baby Luigi is actually holding a retro flag within the movie it's like a toy version of the retro in goal flag from Super Mario Brothers that Mario eventually jumps on and slides down the pole there's lots of little bits of information on the news channel, but the first part is there's actually a Mario Kart TV logo from Mario Kart 8 on the screen with the lack of two cloud, which is a really cool reference, obviously, to Mario Kart 8. The Video Wrestling Association was actually referenced in a headline, and the headline also states, Stolen Vegetables Recovered by Ice Climbers, which obviously is referring to the video game Ice Climbers, where you actually collect vegetables, and that's what you do. You you climb the mountain, collect vegetables, and get to the top with the condor. Um, and it was just a neat little reference towards ice climbers there. So I guess they're technically canon. There is technically some ice climbers out there. When I was looking through, I also found another report of underground crab sightings during the newscast, which is interesting because it is referencing the arcade Mario Brothers game where you had to hit turtles and crabs in the sewers and flip them over in order to take them out as Mario and Luigi, which is a great reference. The newscast also talks about some signal found and star system FS-176, which is an actual Metroid star system homing the planets Zebus and Talon 4, which is super cool reference, hopefully giving us a Metroid movie eventually. Come on, Nintendo. The last one states, R. Hayami wins a Wave Race Championship despite average stats. And this is actually based on the character in game, which does have those stats. He's an all around average character. Turning back to the bedroom, there's actually a Nintendo sticker on Mario and Luigi's television, which is weird because it's just like, does Nintendo exist in this universe? That, that, that would be so strange, but they kind of have to because there's an NES and Mario was playing Kid Icarus, and there's also tons of other Nintendo references in room, like the R Wing from Star Fox. So, yeah. I don't know. One of Bowser's statues is in his pose from one of his classic renders. Now this one could very well be a stretch, but there seems to be the word Deke on one of the walls kind of graffitied, which is interesting. Now I'm very sure there's not gonna be an inappropriate word like a K to follow in a Nintendo Mario kids movie, um, but it does look like it might just say DIC, which could say Deke, which is the entertainment company that actually produced some of the older cartoons back in the day. And one of those cartoons was actually the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, which would be an absolutely amazing reference and would make all of us remember it feel like dinosaurs because I definitely do remember the Deke logo and the sound effect chiming in at the end and of every single show so like yeah I think it's an awesome reference now we've obviously talked about this one before but now you can actually see it because I can actually get a picture of it this is little Max full outfit on the wall you have his green shorts his green boxing gloves and I guess everything besides his black tank top but you don't really need those right all you need is the shorts and the gloves and you can actually see his belt that he used one and some more fighters along the wall. You can see Bald Bull, Doc Lewis, Don Flamenco, and even Disco Kid all from Punch-Out Wii. I believe you can even see Sandman a little bit underneath Doc Lewis. On the wall with the television, you can see more pics of Bald Bull, Don Flamenco, and even Von Kaiser punching Don Flamenco and Glass Joe from Punch-Out Wii once again. Taking a little bit of a step back, we can see Bear Hugger, and it looks like another alternate picture of Mr. Sandman. 
Next, we can see a picture of Bald Bull once again, but beside Piston Hondo. And there also seems to be a classic picture of Little Mac beside them, and there's pictures of Little Mac all over the wall. But something else is very interesting is there seems to be red shorts and also a pair of red gloves up on the wall as well. I can't figure out what this could be from, and the only thing I could kind of conjure up is maybe when Little Mac was blonde, but even then he never wore red shorts and red gloves. So yeah, I really don't know, and I would love to to find out if you guys have any clue. Next up, we have Luigi when he enters the castle. If you'll notice, some of the floor pattern is actually the same one as the Mario Brothers 3 Fortress floor patterns, where it has the black and white square checkered board across the floor, which is a neat reference. Next up, when Mario is fighting Bowser in Brooklyn, you can see a giant poster on the wall that says Lucky Cards. Now, this could be a reference to the fact that Nintendo used to sell cards, referencing maybe Hanafuda cards. And that's where they started off with toys and playing cards. There's a scene where Bowser rips a car from underneath Mario and throws Mario up in the air. But then he falls in this animation, which looks very much like the Mario death animation pose that we see in the games. Back at the Mario Brothers house, you can actually see pictures of the bros and their family up on the wall, including baby Mario and them with their mom and dad. You can see one of Mario and Luigi actually graduating. One on the far left looks like Mario might be wearing a completely different outfit, like almost looks like the builder Mario with the yellow sleeves. And then we see a render of Mario from Mario Tennis Aces. Although it does look slightly different for me for some reason. Maybe it's just me. It looks like they altered his hands and his face just a little bit to match the movie version of Mario compared to the video game one. The newspaper is called the Daily 8-Bit, with the 8 actually spelled out. Back in Mario's family's house, you can actually see the phone dock, which looks like a Nintendo Switch in a sort of way. The left part looks like a Joy-Con with even a D-pad and some type of stick, and it looks like it's just missing the right side, which would be a red Joy-Con, which is pretty cool. Buzzy Beetles are incredibly easy to miss within the Mario movie as they're kind of in the background a lot. But when you do see them and when they're kind of engaged, they have red glowing beady eyes just like in the video games, which is also very scary. But they glow in the movie when they're really angry, which is weird, but it's also cool. I feel like this one is a trickery one. It's very obvious to see, but it's very obvious to miss unless you're looking for it. Because the first time I watched this, I didn't even notice, but the wall that Mario and Luigi breaks through within the sewer system is actually formed to look like an 8-bit sprite of Mario's head. Come on, that's just beautiful. Also in the sewer, as Mario and Luigi are walking down the steps, you can see a sign that says level 1-2, which is the second level of the Mario Brothers games, and it actually is the underground level, and it even starts playing that theme song once they pass this sign in the movie. And my favorite part that of course I had to save for last, I've talked about this before, but I can finally show you the storefront that's actually a travel agency that states Super Sunshine Travel Agency, and it has two dolphins jumping up and down out of the water with a sun symbol logo that's very much the same one as the ones that we see within Super Mario Sunshine, such as Mario's health bar, which is awesome. I love this. I hope there is some type of future movie where they do travel to Al Delfino. I'm really praying for it. And that was over 21 new facts and details about the Mario movie that you most certainly missed at least some of these, because there were some that were just so well hidden it would be impossible to find these without having the digital version now to scroll through. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you really enjoyed this video and if you found something new, stop what you're doing. You have to leave a like and subscribe now to stay up to date on all things Mario and Nintendo in general. And like always, guys, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.